Hello and welcome to this tutorial in the A10. Today we'll be looking at the deployment of bombs. I'll just get airborne and then talk to you a little bit more about what we're going to be doing today. One, request takeoff. Enfield 1 1, tower, you are clear for takeoff. Our takeoff speed will be a little faster than normal as we're very heavy due to the ordnance we have on board. Okay, today we're going to destroy three different targets using the various bombs and deployment modes that are available to you in the A-10. On board we have four Mark 20 Rock Eye Cluster Bombs, which are the white coloured bombs that you can see here. We also have two Mark 82 General Purpose Bombs, which are the smaller of the green bombs and two heavy Mark 84 general purpose bombs, which are the large green bombs. These are the weapon deployment controls. This here is the release mode dial. This here is the ripple quantity selector. And this here is the Ripple Interval Selector. More on rippling in a moment. The Release Mode dial allows you to select how bombs will be deployed. SGL stands for Single, and when selected, only a single bomb will be deployed when you press the Fire key. PRS stands for Pairs, and when selected, will release the bombs in a pair when you press the Fire key. RIP SGL stands for Ripple Single, and RIP PRS stands for Ripple Pairs. When a ripple mode is selected, bombs will be deployed one after the other in a ripple effect. The number of bombs to be deployed and the time between each release can be selected using the ripple quantity and interval selectors. In ripple single mode, bombs will be rippled singularly. In ripple pairs mode, bombs will be rippled in pairs. This will become much more clear as I use the various modes to engage ground targets. So don't worry if it's all a little bit confusing at the moment. Our first target is an ammo depot. Uh, I'll be making a right turn shortly to set up for an attack. I think I'll make that turn now. Okay, the ammo depot is now in front of us, marked by a diamond on the hood. Uh, firstly, we need to enter air to ground mode with the 7 key, like so, and notice the HUD change. For this large ground target we'll need some heavy duty firepower, so we'll deploy a pair of Mark 84 bombs. Firstly, we need to select the bomb, so we'll select the Mark 84 by cycling weapons with the D key. Now I'll select PRS or pairs on the deployment dial with the shift and spacebar key. 
let's take a look at the hood. This dashed line running vertically up and down the hood is the bomb fall line. At the base of it, currently out of view, is the point of impact reticule, which indica indicates where the bomb will land when we press the fire weapon key. As we dive towards the target, the reticule will move up into the hood, and the dashed bomb fall line will become solid. Okay, we're diving down towards the target now. I'm keeping it aligned in the centre of the HUD, and I've throttled back to maintain a constant speed. You can use the air brake for this too if your speed is too high. Just keeping it centred there. Okay, the circular reticule is now moving up into the HUD, and we'll guide it over the target and fire with the enter key. Bombs away! And that's a direct hit. Target destroyed. As usual, once a weapon is deployed, we go to maximum throttle and pull up and sharply away, dumping chafing flares in an escape maneuver. That's the first target destroyed, on to the second. Our next target is a convoy of cargo trucks. We'll be using Mark 20 rock eyes, which are high explosive cluster bombs to use in the anti-tank and anti-vehicle scenarios. We want to drop four bombs along the length of the convoy, and to do this we can use a ripple mode. Firstly, we'll enter air to ground mode, again with the 70, and select the Mark 20s. Now we'll select RPL SGL or Ripple Single on the armament panel. We want to ripple four bombs, so we'll increase the ripple quantity with the control and spacebar keys until it reads four. We want a little delay between each bomb, so I've increased the ripple delay in milliseconds with the V key. I've increased it to 55 milliseconds. Now we're set up to deploy four bombs individually at 55 millisecond intervals. And see the column just down there to our left? So I'll swing out to the right to line up properly. You'll notice the HUD remains the same as the previous deployment. I'm just extending out to the right so I can line the column up properly. I should stress that in a real scenario you, you often won't have this luxury, as you'll have enemy fire and other threats to consider. A later tutorial on dealing with air-to-ground threats will look at more advanced bombing practice. Okay, I've started an attack dive towards the convoy, throttling back to maintain a constant speed. Just turning in now, there's the column ahead of us. Now, as before, we'll guide the impact point pipper over the lead vehicle. Here it comes. And I'll deploy or pickle bombs by holding down the fire weapon key until all bombs are released. Bombs away. Notice the ripple as four bombs are deployed at 55 millisecond intervals. Good hits. Right down the line. And an escape manoeuvre again. Although I think we've got them all, it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, let's come around and check. Uh, yep, we got them all. Scratch one column. Okay, we have one more target remaining, which is a bridge to the north of us, and we'll use our last two bombs to destroy it. So far, we've been targeting and deploying bombs using CCIP, or Continuously Computed Impact Point Bombing, guiding the impact point pipper over a target to calculate where the bomb will land. As you've seen, the impact point must be visible in the HUD, and therefore the aircraft must be in a dive. To destroy the next target, I'll be using an alternative mode, CCRP, or Continuously Computed Release, when in this mode, the release of bombs is automated and allows us to release munitions even when the impact point is below the HUD and out of sight i.e. in level flight. Out ahead of us is the bridge we are tasked to destroy. I'll bring up air to ground mode as usual and cycle to mark H2 bombs with a D key if necessary. Uh, 
and I'll select PRS or pairs on the armament panel in the usual way with the shift and spacebar keys. Take a look at the HUD, and specifically this target designator reticule. You can slew it in the same way as when targeting Maverick missiles with the semicolon, comma, full stop and forward slash keys. When we get close enough to get a good look at the target, I'll move the designator over it and press the tab key to designate that target. I've marked the target in the mission editor as a target, which is why it comes up on the HUD uh, surrounded by a diamond, just to make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. Okay, let's see if I can get a good look at this bridge here. Just moving the target designated reticule over it. OK, I've designated the target with the tab key. Notice the target designator queue, or TDC. That target is now stored in our onboard nav computer. I'll maneuver to extend and come around and we'll be able to set up for an attack on that target using CCRP mode. Notice the TDC is still on the HUD despite the target being behind us. If the TDC is on the far right of the HUD as it is now, that indicates that the quickest direction to put that target in front of you would be to turn right. The same applies if the TDC is on the left of the HUD. Okay, just turn in now. Call up CCRP mode, tap the O key. Notice the bomb 4 line has become solid and the TDC now sits at the top of the HUD. You must now manoeuvre the aircraft so that the TDC aligns with the top of the bomb 4 line and keep it centred there. As we approach the target, the TDC will move down the bomb 4 line. There it goes. Once it reaches the impact point pipper, the bombs will deploy automatically with no need to press the fire key. Bombs away, bombs deployed automatically, and I'm making my escape manoeuvre by breaking sharply away. A direct hit on the bridge. That'll take some time to repair. Target destroyed. And that concludes this tutorial on the basics of CCIP and CCRP bombing. There is certainly more to bomb deployment than what I've sh shown you here. Things can change when you have strong crosswinds to contend with or when you're being shot at. But this tutorial should hopefully get you up there and dropping ordnance on targets. The next tutorial will look at the A-10's limited air-to-air -air capacity with Sidewinder missiles. If you'd like to join me on that tutorial, I'll leave a link in the description box below. Thank you, it's been my pleasure.